Hey everybody, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. Starting a new custom campaign showcase for Warcraft 3. Created by Seven Blood, returning to another revamp campaign. It seemed like a lot of you really enjoyed the Invasion of Kalimdor revamp. I did too, so I'm glad Seven Blood is continuing with this project. And we're heading into the Path of the Damned revamp, which was the Undead campaign from Reign of Chaos. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. If you're unfamiliar with the revamp project, you should go and check out my Invasion of Kalimdor revamp series. Better yet, you can download it and play it for yourself. So these campaigns are played on the latest version of the game, which is the latest version of Reforged, but played with classic graphics. And what it does is it, it just spices up the, the, the base game by adding achievements, adding challenges, changing the tech tree dramatically, changing how these factions are played dramatically, in some cases changing how the maps function as well. Like in the Invasion of Kalimdor, there was a strategic layer where you would spend gold to give yourself upgrades per mission and i think that the undead system is a little different but we'll see how it is let's get started so this is an introduction this is like a cinematic map to get us started so let's give it a go we got some credits here seven blood proudly presents Path of the Damned revamp. Very cool. Okay, it kicks us back. Let's go ahead and head back in. I think the quenching mod 1.5 does allow the reading of campaign files. For now, we're just going to play in the base version of the game and, uh, and play these map by map. Here we go. Trudging through the ashes. Send me in. The Lich King's Plague of Undeath has spread across the capital city and into the outskirts of Lordaeron. Shocked and disheartened by the loss of their beloved king, the forces of Lordaeron were scattered by the ravenous undead warriors. Now Lordaeron is but a shadow of its former glory, and Prince Arthas has yet to be seen. Right, so there is a brutal difficulty now. As per keeping with typical tradition on my channel, we play second from the hardest, which is just hard. I'm perfectly fine with that. As the Lich King's champion, Arthas does not need to rely on his own powers. Instead, you may choose which abilities he may use during missions. In addition, Arthas may reach a maximum of level 50, but does not gain additional ability points per level. Wow, okay. Scourge perks are the main way of customizing your Scourge to be as deadly as you want it. Points are given via finishing missions and bonus challenge objectives found on every mission. Points are not permanently used when purchasing perks and carry forward into future missions, allowing you to freely choose which perks you want per mission. So this is very similar to Invasion of Kalimdor Revamp, where there's like a meta currency that you can spend, and it's not permanent. You get it back, and then you can reallocate it at the beginning of each map. Did I miss anything else that had popped up? So there are also achievements. So there's a challenge objective and achievements. I don't think the achievements give you Scourge perks, but it's just something that we can do for fun. Kill 30 or more villagers on normal difficulty. Do not let Arthas's hit points drop below 50. And then we're not playing on Brutal. And then... That's nice. So it is saved to your profile, so you can always come back and replay these, and it'll remember which ones you've completed. That's pretty nice. I like that. I'm not really too concerned about achievements. Obviously, we can only go for the first two because we're not playing on Brutal, but, you know, some of them, if we get them, we get them. That'll be neat. Um, but I'm really more focused on if there are these, uh, these challenge achievements, unless that just means optional quests. I'm not so sure. So we can choose between Death Coil or uh, Reap. Rips the life, life essence from a target enemy unit, dealing 100 damage and healing Arthas for the same amount. That is... I mean, it's less mana. I do like that. 
Death Coil for this first map seems more important in order to keep our units alive, though. I think on macro missions, this is better. Uh, maybe, but, you know, Death Coil is always just really good. And uh, the heal for 300, uh, for... It's, it's less than... It's less than double of Reap, but it heals for more. So I think that's interesting. And it can... D uh, it can damage uh, living units too. So maybe I don't know. This deals damage and heals Arthas. Anyway, we're gonna take Death Coil. Is my point. So let's stick with that. Secondary ability selection. Royal Guard summons a Royal Captain to follow Arthas into combat for a hundred seconds. This ability can be recast to summon up to three unique Captains, which will be resummoned with full hit points on subsequent castings. Captain Falric, Marwyn, and Luke Valenfort. That's this is neat. Ghostly frontline warrior with vampiric aura and evasion. Shadowy support warrior with summon shadow spawn, afflict shadows, and raise dead. Heavy defense warrior with disease cloud. I like how they all have their own little little things, and it's kind of like the water elemental spell where you can get multiple out at the same time. Blights the ground at a target location and heals all friendly units in the area for a hundred hit points. This is another one where, I mean, this is more mana, and we took the higher mana death coil, so I'm leaning towards desecration again. This is a micro mission, so I think we need, we should go with the healing for this one. Okay, and now we're spending our scourge points. Scourge perks, tier one. Creates a killer instinct within our mindless undead, driving them to greater acts of destruction. Increase attack speed and 40 movement speed for zombies and skeletons and warriors. Extra damage and hit points for fallen units? Fallen footmen, fallen spear throwers, fallen knights, fallen swordsmen, fallen grunts. So, again, this all sounds really interesting. You can tell there's going to be a massively increased tech tree for the, the Scourge here. Rallies the cult of the damned so that they more directly aid the Scourge in combat. Extra mana and extra hit points. Affects acolytes, cultists, and necromancers. Shadow priests, arc necromancers. The ghostly forces of the Scourge learn to venture further into the Shadowlands, making them harder to hit. Ghost, Banshee, Shadow, Spawn, High Bard. So basically, there are four categories of units, and this gives them a bonus for each. We should go Restless Dead, because it's the first mission. We'll definitely have those units. The thing is, my understanding is that in this first mission, mission you're only getting ghouls. But it's also all redone, so it's possible we'll get other stuff too. Release a new type of undead warrior that seems to never die. Gain the ability to train Gravewalkers at the Crypt. Gravewalkers are unique undead that can be revived by raising them. This applies to Necromancers raised at... Oh... So rather than raising skeletons, you just re-raise the unit as it was. That's pretty interesting. Calls our acolytes and cultists to the front lines to support our army. You get extra, you get mana and the ability to raise dead on your builders. I'm not sure what cultists are. Empowers the shadow constructs conjured by our shadow priests to wreak greater havoc. I don't know if I'm going to have those this mission, so I probably won't take that. Teaches our casters the ability to raise zombies more efficiently. Raise dead mana cost reduced by 25. Uh, all I can think to do here is just hope that... I mean, we're not going to take Gravewalkers. I mean, maybe we'll have access to Acolytes. That's three points. I mean, maybe we could take Cult Movements, or we can take Mastery of Death, and then another two-pointer. Like, uh... We could take Martial Remembrance and and Mastery of Death, I guess. That would be fine. I, I, I don't know if, which of these units we're going to be getting this mission, so I just have to guess. Uh, and then lastly... Yeah, see, I can't, I can't change any of these. That's perfectly fine. I saw it didn't change factions, but uh, let's go. Start the mission. Arthas is also completely reworked, and you'll see why. I played a version of uh, one of these maps for Map Arena 2020. And uh, Arthas can raise any unit from the dead into a unique raised unit. It's not just like a skeleton. What trickery is this? Malganus? I don't know how you survive, Call but I'm... yourself, Miss Arthas. I am. Tycondrius. Like Malganus, I am a dreadlord. But I am not your enemy. In truth, I've come to congratulate you. Congratulate me? By killing your own father and delivering this land to the Scourge, you have passed your first test. The Lich King is pleased with your enthusiasm. Yes, I've damned everyone and everything I've ever loved in his name. And I still feel no remorse, no shame, no pity. The rune veil you carry was forged by the Lich King and empowered to steal souls. Yours was the first one it claimed. 
Then I'll make do without one. What is the Lich King's will? The cult of the damned must be rallied once again. Many of the acolytes have been in hiding amongst the populace. Once you've rallied them, I will give you further instructions. Okay, rescue 20 acolytes. We're used to that. Oh, Rest look at that. We got a necromancer. You love to see it. Fallen footman? Use camera to zoom your camera out further. Let's at least try it. Eh. Ah, I can see how that would be really nice on later missions when we're, like, commanding huge numbers of units. So we have fallen footman here. And uh, it's a good, I guess we took that upgrade for the fallen the fallen footman. So this Call of the Dead raises a nearby corpse to the Lich King's bidding. The type of unit raised depends on the unit type of the corpse. So basically, the idea here is uh, it raises the unit and it's permanent. And so like if you kill a grunt, you'll get an undead grunt. So it, it's really interesting how there's like an undead variant for a lot of the different units in the game. At least this is my understanding. I didn't see it too much in action because I didn't understand how it properly worked in, uh, in the Mapparino map that I played. And then the necromancers now raise zombies instead of skeletons, whereas Arthas's Call of the Dead is like what way is different and much better. Finally. Anyway, you can use Arthas's death pact ability on weak undead like zombies to regain hit points. Let's come on over here and see can we uh, can we raise anything from this speak fool. From this over here. I guess we should have taken the The restless dead. Actually, I think we we took we did take the thing where it was um cheaper Cheaper raised dead. What is it? Pot of mana is all good. That's a dead end. We gotta be careful with this call of the dead. It's a hundred mana. Arthas can also get up to level. What did it say? Like flipping, flipping forty or fifty. Yeah, he's out of mana. Okay, let's go. Acolytes rescued zero. It's a good start. Frostmorn hungers. What is great lord? Our master Kelthuzad told us that you would come. Kel'Thuzad? How could he have known it? Be wary. If the townsfolk see your undead minions, they'll call the local guards to stop you. I like how the zombies are, are peasants with pickaxes. Approach Red Acolytes with Earthus to rescue them. However, use caution any townsfolk who see you will alert the guards. Right, right, right. Oh, and that zooming in resets the camera. And I can't zoom back out unless I use the command. This is more we're going to have more units here, so we should be able to just kill these guys. We should try to keep these units alive where possible. Because we can mass heal them later. Alright, this is going to raise any living units and undead warriors and call the dead. This applies to members of Cult of the Damned as well. Okay, well, I didn't really want zombies there. Yeah, see, so look at that. We get a, we get the fallen footman. That's that's really it's really really neat. I like that quite a bit. But we're like out of mana already, so we go desecration. Heals my zombies, and now we have some blight on the ground that we can fall back to. All right, well, you guys keep working on that. Uh, and I saw the challenge thing pop up, but I didn't read it. Have a food supply of 25 or more at any point. Challenges are special conditions that you can fulfill on missions to receive extra scourge points moving forward. Completing any mission adds plus one point to the following missions, and completing the challenge adds two. Okay, so we definitely want to be doing this every mission. And that's, you know, that might be on top of optional quests. I'm not, I'm not so sure. So what did it say up to, was it 25? 25 or more, and then the achievement was kill 30 or more villagers, don't let Arthas' hit points drop below 50. Again, I'm not, like, super concerned about that, but we'll do our best. Um, we'll take our time here again. It's been a long intro where I, like, spent a lot of time reading the perks and stuff. We'll be doing less of that each mission because, you know, there'll be fewer new incremental upgrades. You know, we're only going to read the new stuff. So we're going to try to maybe get to that 25 level. It doesn't say end of the mission. It just says at any point. No one orders me. So we can kind of take our time and raise those. Oh, look at that. What does the shadow will? Speak, fool. Challenges are special First optional objectives that can be completed on every map. Uh, Wait, did it tell me this already, or, am I, or did it tell me the achievements already? The local graveyards. Those buried there will serve you well. 
I think that was because I went into the quests and I saw challenge versus the achievements. The that, that must have been it. Wait. Yeah, keep... I mean, that's a waste of his mana to do that, unfortunately. What does the um, must be? Let's just go in with this group. The, the Acolytes die so quickly, we have to be very careful. Slaying more powerful enemy units such as captains and raising them will result in more powerful undead warriors for the Scourge. Well, that would help, you know, if I... I mean, we could Death Pact our, uh... Our zombies. To get captains instead. Okay, let's head over here. Death Pact has quite a long cooldown. So I think you have to be really judicious with when you have Call of the Dead on autocast. I don't think it's a great idea to keep on autocast, and in fact we should save it so that we can get this captain. So let's head over this way. Okay, trying to focus on this guy. We're going to go below 50%, but that's perfectly fine. Let's kill this captain and then raise him up. There it is. We can throw this down as well. Get a fatty heal. Pot of mana is perfect, so just pop that straight away. Start resurrecting other units. And there's a knight also. Did I... Oh, yeah, the captain's in there. The zombies, I think, are just not long for this world. Let's try to save these guys, though. Speak. Uh, at last. That death coil... Uh, yeah, I have to be a lot more judicious with when I use these these abilities. Otherwise, they're totally wasted. What is it now? Really nice spreading damage across all these units. Speak, fool. Unit of healing. Tome of power is a level. Tread light. Last. And I don't think we put points into... I don't think we put points into these. They just probably get better mission per mission. No one orders me around. <laughs> no one orders me around. Murder? Murder? Speak Tur loud. Turn that off, by the way. Tread lightly. What is it now? I'll make sure you suffer. Fine. And Pot of Mana. You love to Frostborn. see it. Okay, so the zombies exist really only to be death pacted, I think. Everything else is is less expendable. This Let's go down and around. No one orders me around. Ah, the dead last. have risen again. Guards. Guards. So like I don't mind if these guys call the guards. We might have to be a little more careful with how we choose, you know, who we're turning. Hit this guy. Lots of pots here. I like that quite a bit. And like, sure, I'll destroy structures. Um, I didn't leave this acolyte up here, did I? I don't think so. Did the zombies even cost supply? Like, are we getting supply? I think it's specifically the Call of the Dead that we're getting stuff from. Killing children. Horses. Oh, the horses run away. So this um, this barracks also drops stuff, or at least it used to, uh, in the original. I like that we have a fallen captain now with vampiric aura. That's that's excellent. Anyway, we'll keep an eye out to see if we can raise stuff. That's uh, kill these guys. Guards. Don't let them get away. You love to see it, okay? I think it's it might be like boots of speed or something. Whatever it is in here, it's not really worth it. But we'll just be really diligent, and we're exploring a lot. It's a short mission, so we could take the time to just really get through and 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 check all this stuff. Yep, nothing. <laughs> That's you know, you hate to see it. Hey, it's a different game. All right, let's get in here. Don't chase that. So maybe we can raise this guy as a zombie and then raise the... What would happen if we raise the priest? Let's find out. Okay, and then let's sit and wait, because I'm, I'm kind of curious. 
What you giving me? You call. Shadow priest. That sounds logical. Sh summon shadow spawn. Ah, so we could have put points into this too. Yeah, if we wanted to, we could have put like points into this. So we have to constantly be aware of of Arthas's mana. We're gonna get the most out of his raise dead in terms of supply, so we should just be death pacting our zombies as much as possible because those are one supply. If we, I, the challenge I feel like is is cru like I'm gonna get the challenge as much as possible. We have to. Um, we're learning a lot about the systems here and how we how and when we should be having raise dead on as a spell that we should be using versus something we should be a little more hesitant to leave on autocast. Let's pull in a couple of these guys. Lord Blackwood. I wonder if we could. Uh, Focus on him. And then turn on Ray's dead. Lord Blackwood's blade. Looks like Lord Bla Blackwood is not uh, resurrectable. Or yes, he is. Yeah, Lord Blackwood. And he's a big skeleton with an aura. Lord Blackwood's blade. Grants the hero plus three, st st three strength and agility when carried. Lore! This simple yet well-crafted blade once belonged to a, ma a minor lord or a noble. Now just another shuffling corpse in the ranks of the Scourge. This is... It, it, it changes the way you think about how you play the Scourge in a really, really fun way. That's that's really what I have to say so far about this. It really makes you rethink how you're playing here. Let's pop this so we can bring this guy back too. So we're building up like a, like a full-on army, and it's not just... It's not just skeletons that despawn, like we're built a fallen spear thrower. Again, every unit so far that we've killed becomes a unique thing. I'm gonna guess the shadow priests are consistent, like if you were to kill a sorceress, for example, maybe you'd get a shadow priest still. I, I don't know. I don't actually know. I'm assuming that almost everything has its own special unit. at last. The undead, sound the alarm. This is more Okay, let's get in here and just kill as many of these as possible. Might want to back up here. I, I would really prefer to kill the... Uh, or to take the captain. What I don't know is how it, it may or may not prioritize what gets raised. Like, I really would prefer he takes the captain in that specific case, for example. And, like, we need more we need more mana. I could also eat the shadow spawn for a little bit of mana in order to get more fallen footmen. We're almost at that 25 supply, but we are out of mana. Potion of greater mana. Let's just pop it. And then just stand here, and yeah, now we have uh, another captain, and I really like how there's that very clear challenge completed thing here. So now that I'm less concerned about our our mana and stuff, we can just we can just go and you know start throwing units into the grinder and stuff. This is a really good introduction for how this system works. Spe how I mean, Call of the Dead seems like it's going to be core to like our entire our entire state of play, like. Uh, everything we do is going to be, I think, focused around how this uh, Call of the Dead works. So I'm glad, you know, again, I'm taking my time. We might be able to kill enough uh, villagers for the achievement. We are Arthas is, I'm pretty sure, gone below the 50% the HP earlier. But we're just going to kill as much of Lordaeron as uh, the Lordaeronians, if you will, as possible. Yep, villager season complete. We killed enough of them before they could run away. Like I said, this is all new, so it's pretty exciting. I mean, it's it's new, but it's not, right? I'm familiar with the map layout, but I, I really like how uh, the style of play feels very different. And a lot of it revolves around your hero just raising unique permanent units. That's just so cool. This is something I didn't really use really well to my advantage when I played... Uh... Uh, let's get up here. We can raise the bandits. Uh... I don't want him to raise the villagers that we killed. Or no, now that's militia. I, I don't think we should use race dead here. I like these shadow spawn. These, these are exciting too. They have mana. 
you need Call of the Shadows for them to use uh, Shadow Curse. But, you know, every little bit helps. It's really nice. Shadow Priest doing that little bit of extra damage, too. I, I have a feeling I'm going to end up using pretty much Arthas' mana exclusively for Call of the Dead. And in the future, there won't be, like, normal villagers to accidentally raise the zombies. Pretty much everything you we raise in the future is going to be worthwhile, is, I, I think, the situation. Or how the situation will be. All right, let's get up here. This is a this is a situation also where it's kind of like, how could I have known? Like, how could I have known that uh, we would have gotten a necromancer? How could I have known that we would have been able to raise a priest to become a shadow priest? Etc, etc, you know? All right, let's get in there. We got another captain here, too, and we have enough to raise multiple uh, multiple dead with Arthas, so we'll be able to get this captain, I think, at this rate. And expand our ranks. Iron Shield. Oh, yeah. that's It's so cool, again, and you can... You, can, you can't be perfect with it, but you can kind of finagle... You can kind of finagle, um, like, when you turn this on autocast, if it'll be particularly useful or not. All right, turn that off. Let's go ahead and move up. The camera zoom out also, I think, is not necessary, but nice. How many more of these do we have to find, by the way? 24. There must be a lot in the last section, unless I've missed some, but I'm just, I'm so enamored with how this all, with how this works. It's really, really cool. Arthas, come and rescue this guy. I'm so enamored with how it works. I like how we have Lord Blackwood here. He's like a demi-hero. I doubt he'll be in the future missions, but wouldn't that be cool if he survives here? He's just there in the next mission, too. In some of the macro missions, you're going to see our units just going down really quick, though. It's, it is the undead campaign, after all. And by extension, I expect the missions are going to get harder. Um, I think Invasion of Kalimdor Revamp did a great job of that. You can attack gates to destroy them. I just want to make sure... Uh, here's the... Um... I'm in luck. These graves were dug recently. Arise in the name of the Lich King. Lich King... Yeah, so it seems like skeletons in general... No one orders me around. Skeletons in general have been... Speak, fool. Just completely replaced with zombies, but the zombies are permanent, which is neat. Uh, the Shadow Priests seem really cool too, but you do have to... Can I put this on autocast? That would be nice if you could do the summon, o the summon guys on autocast. Break these... What is it now? I, I really don't like having too good to use syndrome when it comes to um, consumables in these campaigns. They're very, very powerful if you just use them. Finally. Attack damage by three. This is armor by two. I like how it's you know, it's a ring of protection and claws of attack, but they're changed to be different items. Makes them it makes them feel a little more unique and interesting. Okay, we're coming in. Save this guy. And, like, at a certain point, if you feel your army is big enough, then, like, you don't need Call of the Dead on. Our pots of healing do stack because this is technically reforged. We are playing on classic graphics, though, as I had mentioned. And then you death packed here. I'm going to assume Death Pact is a permanent... Well, maybe it's replaced. We need something that consistently can restore our mana, though. That That is a must. And Death Pact has a pretty long cooldown. Again, you see these aren't marked as level 1, 2, 3, so I'm wondering if there's going to be a way to, to improve the... to improve them at some point. I mean, I'm, I'm, sur I'm sure of it. There has to be. Wait, kill this. There you go. Murder all the civilians. The units clump really nice, too. The hitboxes have been uh, lessened. I don't have hitboxes. The collision the collision boxes have, uh, have been improved. So that the units clump up a little bit more. So especially when you're playing as the Scourge, that's going to be... That's going to come into play quite a bit when you've got all these zombies. 
So normally there's stuff behind these trees, but I don't think I have a way to destroy the trees unless our uh, zombies can attack them or... Scroll of healing. These are all things that we can use in future. Uh, specifically the next mission we have to fight the paladins and stuff, so I'm perfectly fine holding on to these where possible, like self-healing items. Dude, we got these vampiric auras going on. Okay, let's just walk up here, rescue this guy. Now, let's check to see if we have anything that can attack uh, trees. Like, can you attack trees? I'm just going to assume that if there was anything behind these trees, like in the original, it's been removed. Because I have no way, I don't have any way to destroy the trees, as far as I know. Typically, only workers can attack trees to destroy them. No, one orders me around. no stop. <laughs> That's fine. I think we have enough stuff. We don't need another captain. Help. I mean, we could, we're at the point we could start consuming our, our fallen footmen if we wanted. We get a much bigger mana boost. Okay. And then bust these guys out if there's anyone in here that we can... Rescue, or I guess not. I guess they're empty. Stop. Oh, no, that wasn't Arthas. Okay, his is turned off. This, so we're going to be having to juggle... Oh, look at those tomes. We're going to be having to juggle the Call of the Dead throughout this whole playthrough. And that's fine. Hopefully I haven't missed any other tomes on the, on the ground. We've gotten two. Maybe one had dropped earlier, but I just totally missed it. But hopefully not. See, now I'm always, I'm always self-conscious of it. Dude, get him. The dead have risen again. Guards. What is it? I would have expected... Guards. Ah. Well, I was going to say, I would have expected one, like, final, larger um, engagement here at the end. But I guess that's kind of what this is with the knight and stuff. So if I turn this on... See, he didn't... I, I don't know how he... I don't know how Raise Dead is prioritized. Um, like, which, which to... Which to resurrect, but unfortunately, this is kind of how it is. We've got a Sir Zalik here, Ring of Regen and an Iron Shield. He's gonna go down really quick. I would love an opportunity, maybe, to raise him up. Tomo Power and Ring of Superiority. Let's drop. That's plus one all stats, isn't it? I mean, I think we can afford to give up plus three damage. Okay, so we pick that up. I'm going to keep those consumables for the next mission, and let's see if we can find the remaining guys to rescue. 24? I don't know which one I missed. What is it now? At last. Right here. So we did the challenge. I don't think we got that, you know, 50% health thing. I think it would have marked it as complete here at the very end if we did it. Well done, Death Knight. The cult is nearly assembled. Lordaeron lies in ashes. What good are these cultists to us now? They will aid you in your next undertaking. And what's that? You will go to Anderhal and recover the remains of the Acolyte's former master, the necromancer, Kel'Thuzad. Don't, uh, you know what? Don't show me the ones I didn't complete. That hurts. I really like the Maximus Scourge perk points obtained. That's really nice. So I think we started with five or six. Yeah, we started with five, and then we got one for winning. And I thought it was you got one total for winning or two total for winning plus challenge. But instead, it's two extra for doing the challenge, which makes the challenge doubly important. Triply important, in a way. So, um... We really, really want to focus on that for sure. Um, so I took my time on this mission. I, I took it slow because I wanted to try to experience the new Call of the Dead system. And I think it's excellent. We need to be constantly focused on Arthas's mana and keeping track of when we keep that autocast ability on. Because it's 100 mana, and because Arthas can get so many levels, his mana pool is going to be out of control later on. So we have to be constantly replenishing his mana and it's going to make me rethink a lot more how I use his other abilities. Because, like, Death Coil is really good, but I would almost rather get a, a totally new 
free permanent unit, especially a powerful one, then heals something for 300 HP. Like, it really makes you rethink how you use your abilities. I'm actually really... I mean, I didn't expect to not be, but I'm very excited to continue this campaign with how the play style has changed for the undead. And it feels a lot more like the undead should play, uh, which is, you know, flooding with these really weak zombies. Similar to like flooding with skeletons, sure, but... I don't know what it is about the zombies makes it just feel a little bit more like the undead should. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Hey, look, if you enjoy this content, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. And uh, if you're liking the series, then uh, subscribe for more like it in the future. All right. I'll see everyone next time. Bye-bye.